Who can guess what Mark is doing? Who can guess? Who can guess? That familiar sound. Good morning, coffee moaners. Good morning. Welcome if you're on podcast. Um, you won't be able to see that we are somewhere different. We're keeping that as a surprise, actually, but there will be a surprise um, live for the members <laughs> later on in the day. There will. Revealing. So, yeah, there, there, there's going to be a surprise live in the members area. We're going to give you, there's only going to be 10 minutes notice before because we're going to be getting the link. We have to get the link up into the community area for the family guests. So it'll land 10 minutes before we're going to go live. Oh, Selena Lou Fogg, did you catch a glimpse? Hang on. Did you catch a glimpse of yourself in the behind the scenes, scenes in the See Him in the No Name Sunday show? Lots of people love that. Lots oh. of behind the scenes of you girls oh. doing your stuff. How is everyone? Hi, Faith. We missed you yesterday. As I say, we are in a secret location having a lot of fun, which of course you will see lots of. A couple in. A couple in. Um, um, if you don't know, uh, if you're maybe this is your first time to Coffee Morning, so we do this daily, but we've also got loads of other stuff going on on the channel. Um, and Hi, so Alvaro. check all that out as well. And that's what we're doing at the yes, moment. I just suddenly felt really nauseous. Suddenly. Probably the amount of bloody coffee you've had. I haven't, I've had one. Right. I've so, one. Um, yeah, so today, Coffee Morning, we are going to be talking about wedding, pr wedding prank divorces, homophobic London attack, can't quite believe that. Banning bad tippers and the new James Bond Poten rumors. Potentially, yeah, potentially the new James Bond. Uh, this was posted on the Popcorn Junkies last night. But I suppose the most serious of all of those is um, they're really awful news around this um, homophobic attack on the two brewers. And now you know the two brewers. I didn't know the pub. You know it, don't you? Oh, yeah, I used to go there a lot. And a lot in, in of my Clapham. friends go there. You know, it's always like, off to the two brewers, you know. Really? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they'll go there for a dance or a pool or whatever, snog. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, God, it's been there forever, the two brewers. Um, yeah, so this is just horrendous. So this is two people who were um, stabbed um, on Sunday night, I believe, uh, mm. as, they were, as they stood outside. It's more it's as much a nightclub as it is a pub. They have sort yeah, of drag shows and all yeah, sorts of stuff like yeah. that. Um, it was around about 10.15. And, you know, the funny, the first question people ask is, is, well, how do you know it's a homophobic attack? Well, when it's, it's a bit like the Admiral Nelson when, you know, a, the nail bomb was put in the pub. There are certain venues, though I didn't know this was one, where you kind of know that if there's any attack on the venue, you know it's a cultural attack on the people in a mm. sense, because mm. if it's not provoked by anything else. Um, but apparently the, the pub have... Um, have like really sort of irrefutable evidence on their CCTV, don't they? Um, demonstrating uh, presumably what you can hear or, or certainly what you can see. Both the men have survived, obviously. They were taken to hospital, they've been discharged. But it's, it's one of those stories that just, you know, um, Sadiq Khan has sort of, you know, kicked back against homophobic culture wars. And I think the drag queen who was performing on the night said that the, the sense for gay people in London is that there is an uptick in hostility towards gay, gay people. And you just you see, and I'm under this illusion. I really am under this illusion. That things, I suppose because of the industry that we work in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm a, I, yeah, I, and it, it's just, well, it's yeah. just... Not even tolerance. I mean, it's just not tolerance. No, 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 but I mean, do you yeah, know what I mean? I know what you mean. But, but it's just, we just don't even think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then it's... It, and, you know, I must, I must think about it more because Abby Reed, yeah. an awful lot of people are still facing a lot of prejudice around it. I mean, this is weird. Um, it's weird because for myself, you know, growing up within essentially the LGBTQ then plus sort of community, you know, essentially two guardian, two parents, lesbian parents, um, lots and lots of uh, gay, you know, parent, my mum had lots of gay friends, knowing lots of lesbians. I mean, there is the danger when you're sort of, when you are in... Mm very much embedded within your culture, your world, shared values. You know, it's the echo chamber thing of, a nice echo chamber of thinking, oh, well, this is, what, yeah. what, what is there even well, to be noted about Yeah, this? like, who's, what difference does it make to you what somebody is or is not? And I think that's um, why something like this happening yes. in, a, in a city like London suddenly yes. reminds you that, all oh, right, okay, not everyone is on the same footing 
which mm. is desperately worrying. Well, and then out of London. No. Oh. Well, oh isn't it God. terrible to say that, though, isn't it? Because if, if you live outside of London and you're not like that, it's like... But then why is there that... I suppose it's the sense that if you're in a city and it is a melting pot, you're forced into a more tolerant... Mm. Uh, perspective mm. to people, aren't you? Mm. It's just what you see more. However scared, prejudiced, ignorant you are, you are going to have to face that. Yeah. One imagines in the city, but... I can tell you now, yeah. where we are, I have never known such a contrasting, and this is contrasting with London, such a contrasting, tolerant, inclusive, accepting... Non-distinctions, you know, no distinctions being made between colour and race. Do you know what I mean? It feels so less. It feels so less obvious. It's so bizarre. I thought. I thought London was the kind of, um, you know, the benchmark that most places mm. were reaching to, but it it, it isn't. It isn't. Um, Abby Reed, where was your comment, darling? You said, as an LGBT person, life is getting scarier. Hate crimes have doubled in the last year. Wow, God, I had no idea. Yeah. And where, where, oh, you might not want to say, Abby, but if you just said roughly whereabouts you are in the country. Yeah. Um, Look, Hannah Lieb, Lieb shoots. It was said in Heartstopper that there, are in, that there is surprise that people can still be homophobic nowadays. I know it's a fiction, but as a queer person myself, it takes me by surprise as well. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose if you are, you know, if you're, if you are living in, you know, God, no, this is happening in London. If you're living somewhere yeah, where it just... is, every you know, everybody is just an equal person for the love of God, it would still be shocking, I suppose. Look, I wonder what your mum thinks about this. Yeah. Clodagh Egan, look, happening a lot in Dublin at the moment, and not just homophobic, seems to be against tourists too. So scary. Wow. The world's going... Intolerant. Hot. Intolerant, intolerant. Karen Rogers, are you in Brighton? No. Nope. Good guess. Um, so yeah, so that, that that's a story that's I think hit a lot of Londoners. It's obviously hit the gay community across the country. Um, it's just a reminder that, but you know, oh, look, Stuart G got a coke, can of coke thrown at him, him and his husband in outside a gay pub outside in Blackpool. Yeah, he's, I suppose it's that sitting identified target, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I wonder how. I'm not suggesting that men who go to strip clubs or private private lap dancing clubs and stuff like that are all homophobic, far from it. But, um, I mean, I wonder how, you know, do you know what I mean? You, you would imagine a sort of, I don't know, a group of gay people sort of throwing shit at people going into a strip. Do you know what I mean? It just wouldn't happen, would it? You'd, what you would assume from that is they don't like people going to strip clubs, so it's about that. Mm. So that's why it's safe to assume that it's because you're outside a gay club. Do you know what I mean? They'll probably be like, oh, you know, it's just passing, just passing. Oh, it drives me nuts. Absolutely drives me nuts. Um, Sorry, I'm just reading some of these comments. Grace Ann Martin, my stepdaughter got attacked along with her long time girlfriend. Um, coming, coming out of Tesco's. Fourth year school boys. Eight of them on their lunch break. Police advise not to press charges. Why, why, why do police why? always advise to not press charges? Because they can't be bothered. But I Paperwork. mean, it is still, it's still in schools, isn't it? It oh is the God. biggest like insult still to say you're gay. gay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that hasn't changed. Yeah. Yeah. Just awful. Uh, what was that? Shout out for Maisie. Shout out for Maisie Kinsella. Big shout out to Maisie Hi, Kinsella. Hi, Maisie. Yeah, Hi there. there. Um, absolutely awful. Anyway, so that, that's a big story in London. Now, this story, um, Zoe, lovely Zoe, you drew our attention to this, uh, or drew Nad, they sent it to Nad, and we were discussing this, weren't we, before the weekend, mm. or mentioned it. And then it popped up again today, and it was your story. And this is, um, oh no, that's not it. <laughs> this is about a, well, the story today is about a bride who's asked for a divorce the day after the wedding because the groom conducted a cake prank. Yeah, and apparently this is more and more of a trend that um, the actual film, or shall I show you the film actually? Thanks, Abby. This is the one that... It's on our Instagram, uh, Coffee Moaning Instagram stories as well, if you want to This is the one that Zoe sent us. Yeah. So, um, oh. So, here's this bride running along, thinking her husband is going to jump in with her, and he casually walks along the side. Look at her. Look this. at her in a beautiful dress, trying to... This is another one. And she is actually saying to him, don't, don't put this in my, don't put this in my mouth. He grabs her stuffs the cake into her mouth, 
she just walks off and then we're seeing another couple. She's looking so sweet in a beautiful yeah. dress and her makeup. He's getting the cake. I'm just doing this for podcast people. And he comes towards her and she's scared. She runs backwards. He this. knocks her down onto the floor and smashes the cake into her mouth. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that is outright, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> violence. She is yeah, properly really is. saying don't. These are the men that don't understand the word no. She's saying no and anyone can see there that she does not want the cake smashed into her face. You know, the makeup, the hair, that, and that one in the swimming pool. Because she's running with him. Okay, we're going to do this crazy thing together. if you look at close-up of her face. Uh, we're going to do this thing and it's going to bring close and we're both going to jump into the pool and he just walks on by and leaves us struggling. The other thing is with a great big dress like that, but a number of people have already Jesus. said it said it's 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 a harmless joke. So so there is a discrepancy here. So let me do a poll. It is not a harmless joke. Okay, let me do a poll. I don't find that a harmless joke at all. Look at their faces. Are bride pranks harmless? Harmless. I tell you what it says to me, I and I'm really willing to hear other people's point of view. If that was one of our daughters, oh my god! Oh my god! Are you joking? Are oh you joking? My God. I would fucking pole vault across the tables. I would fucking wrench the cake from his hand. I would drag him out of whatever freaking marquee we had. I'd find the pole that was holding the marquee up and I would hammer his head against the marquee. <laughs> and I'd say, how do you like having this great big cake rubbed in your face? I would take her quietly to a room and I, I would see, pray different. to her, pray to her to leave him right there, right then, and care what the wedding had cost, and care about anything. He's, as my Aunt Jamil used to say, when somebody tries to show you themselves, don't look away. The cake ones as, are awful, Charlotte Peter. It's so misogynistic. It's so misogynistic. It, it, misogynistic. You, I don't know if you saw the close-up of the girl with the denim jacket on. She was really, really saying to him, she was holding her finger, she said, don't do this, yeah. don't do yeah. this. And so he was even more determined, and he, he ground it into her face. I don't understand. It's 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 only about it's well the ones that we've Demeaning. seen. The only I was thinking about this though in a bit more detail. I was thinking if you have the kind of relationship where you you do pranks on each other, I think pranking per se is okay. But I think when it becomes so one sided that it is like someone just said, it's about humiliation. All of those the women at the end of it, you know, unless they kind of push back against it, have been humiliated by their partner that they're going to spend the rest of their life with. Now, there has to be a choice, as we put on the Insta stories. Do you divorce? Because this woman in this article says she made it very clear before they got married that she, he was not to do this. Maybe he didn't want and, to be married. But, but then he did it. So if it's been made clear, don't do this. It's like when you say, don't do a surprise something or other. There's a kind of clear, don't do it. And then there's a kind of, don't do it. So if it's been clearly said, don't do it, fine. If he's done it thinking it was harmless and then very quickly kind of there's a look in his eye of, oh God, I've misjudged it, then presumably you well, could take him aside I didn't and say, know that was, was one that stupid. had made the point of saying, I don't want to do the prank and he did it anyway. That makes me think he doesn't want to be married. No, that's the bride. In, in The Independent today, this bride uh, revealed that she found herself asking for a divorce one day after her husband and her tied the knot. Uh, she posted this on an advice column. Um, she confessed she couldn't stay married him because he'd broken her one non-negotiable at the wedding, that he not rub wedding cake in her face. She but said that. What have we non got to? Non-negotiable. What have we got to when women have to say, have to put in a clause to say, don't grind cake into my face? But it's, okay, can I, I mean, just ask where this, this is, has come this from? This is, this is. Where's it come from? For me, this is all about control and this is about... This yeah, to me yeah, is is literally Red flag from city. the Stonehenge. Stonehenge. No, the mm. Stonehenge. I don't think they probably did it. Stonehenge. They're probably it's looking the at the uh, <laughs> Stone Age. Sorry, moon. it's from the Stone Age. It's yeah. like you will learn on your wedding day that I am the master. I will humiliate you. I you will bend to my my control. You will you will do as I say, and if not. I will make sure that I make a fool of you in front of everyone that cares about us. I, think, I mean, how anyone can see it is anything other than that. I think there will be some occasions where yeah, someone where does it, just they've missed, yeah. no, or, the, or, or some guy misjudges yes. it, thinking this is something, or there's beer pressure from, from the blokes. But, but 
I don't understand what, the very idea of it is so misogynistic ingrained in it. The idea that you rub it in Somebody their there face, someone else's saying face people are doing them. it for TikTok clicks and I wonder if, uh, you know, it, this has been done once and it was fun and it got picked up. This is where these viral videos can just be so, awful. I don't know, I'm just saying. And then was it picked up? And then, oh, it's just another extra thing that we've got to do now when we get married. Uh, it's like... Um, Someone just said here, it's like such and such and such and such, I forgot who you mentioned, who do pranks on each other all the time. Let's have a look. Pranks have to be a shared thing, Helen Groves, not mm. one-sided. Yeah, but that's the kind of thing my ex would find funny. Mm. I would have punched him straight on the nose and see how he liked it. it. For me, that is a bully. That personifies a bully. Well, the me. one You've who got pursued the power. her to the back of the room. Yeah, that was you, a bit weird. Backwards. And she was standing there looking so like pretty and sweet, wasn't she? And then he just pushed her all the way to the back of the room and then put... I mean... I want to see the next bit of the videos where the parents of the girl jump up and go for him because it would not be pretty. I tell Natasha you Melchin, my former husband put me on speaker on front of his colleagues, all of whom I knew well, when I called him after getting lost on a very cold day and got hysterical. And was that... Are you saying that, oh, that wasn't nice? He put that on at the wedding day. What, in the speech? Oh. What is going on here? This this girl who was like commenting on it on TikTok. Wedding makeup is expensive is another consideration, I'm sure, because then it has yeah. a huge implication, doesn't it, for the rest of the day? Oh God, of course it does. Yeah. You look like shit. It's like imagine you know when you have put a hat on and then somebody says, "Well, can you take the hat off?" and you just feel so gross because you've got hat hair. Imagine that, but okay. on a wedding. <laughs> But playing, de playing devil's advocate, is it not just one of many parts of what seems to be the roasting aspect of a wedding? So the best man speech is often about this throwing is, someone No, but this the... is, this is, you don't do that. Not to the way that somebody looks. Well, that's, I... just, that's just awful. It's if... the one day where everybody, you know, group, bride and groom and guests all want to look their best. I would take the potential groom of a daughter of mine upstairs by the scrubs right, and I now. would face plant him we've done in it a now. full toilet. We've done it now. We don't need to hear any more of that. I just head. think it is just appalling. I think that it tells you everything about the person. And, yeah, I'd put, put a poll. Would you leave that day? Would you, would you divorce so that day? So 90% say, say pranks are, uh, are, aren't... Are bride pranks harmless? Yes, 90%, no. 90%. No, yes, 9%. No, 90%. Fucking hell, I can't read these. Um, what am I asking? No, don't worry. I can't it's ask fine. it. I can't it's ask fine. it. So, um, I didn't realise you'd already done one. Yeah. Yeah, so, shocking. Disgusting. Um, and I think that whenever these kind of videos are shared, it's good to have a discussion about around young people. Well, the br this the bride in question who divorced said she got a lot of kickback, though, from a lot of people in her life who, said, who disagreed with her. They, they said, you know, it's... Um, up. It's I do up. think yeah, there will yeah. be some cases here where it's men that didn't really want to get married and felt pushed think? into getting married. Yeah. And they let out some steam. And there was some rage. Some and, well, that to me is rage. Rage, wow. maybe rage oh. at the planning of the wedding, rage at the actual wedding, rage that I'm suddenly. If it, all I see is yeah, rage. I find it really unsettling the trend. Yeah. These weird and it's a bit like remember those trends where what was the trend on TikTok that kids would run around? It was about slapping people. You'd film oh, yeah, people being that was slapped, awful. Oh, God. and it was to see the yeah. response. Dark it's just days. oh god. Okay, um, so that's a uh, woman. Da, 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 da. So this story is French restaurateurs in the Riviera are going to ban. So this is in places like Cannes and I guess Nice and places like that. Or, you know, so expensive regions of France, really expensive restaurants. They're going to ban literally bad tippers in restaurants. They're going to keep. They keep. A they list. keep a list. And a checklist and a black book of all the names of people who come in and haven't tipped them. Or haven't tipped them sufficiently. Or haven't so tipped them sufficiently. So they, either they can't get a table or they are so they add on they add on or if they do, they add on a secret charge. This is just I, What do you think of that, guys? So the argument here in a sense is now there's someone else who's written a piece, what's his name? Kevin Maher, who Again, I find it so hard. So he's written this piece for the Times. He says, expensive restaurants are barring mean tippers, so would I. And he talks about the fact that he once was a waiter in Cannes. He's never forgotten the fact that Billy Bragg, who plays his, as he quotes, jangly guitar about sort of workers' rights and all that kind of stuff, never tipped him. And so he's obviously clearly lived with resentment around Billy Bragg not tipping him for literally tens of years, you know, decades, decades. 
do you think is it is it a bit like in Paris where the waiters only earn the money from their tips well, and I think, they don't get paid wages? Well, I think there are a lot. I think there are a lot of situations in which yes, the waiter is the front face who doesn't doesn't receive the tip. I mean, whenever I leave a tip in those you know places like Wagga or whatever, you always ask, "Do you get the tip?" And sometimes when they say no, so you may get places, a cash. You know, so many places just take the tip. Yeah. So we for year. Oh, you've got service included. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Fifteen percent, whatever. And then to find out, because when I was waitressing, it wasn't like that. And then to find out that people haven't got that money no. and it goes straight back to the restaurant. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, this is, so yeah. Um, so this is restaurants in Saint-Tropez, Cannes, all along the French, French Riviera. They're, they're not allowing or they're, they're going to refuse or bar access to certain restaurants or unless, as you say, they themselves add an enormous tip. And I just don't know, I don't know. I mean, is this a case of, is this Robin Hood? Is this Robin Hood in style and in an intent? Mm. Is it fair enough? If these people, and believe me, I've felt, when I've been at the Cannes Film Festival, it's like this guy says, you want a bottle of wine in a restaurant in Cannes during the Cannes Film Festival, forget it. It's unaffordable. I mean, he says it's Why literally... Why make it so expensive that nobody well, because buys they, it? I guess because they've got nobody's... A-listers there, but I suppose... But nobody's buying it. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose there's no resentment How many more than if you, if, you, if you haven't been given a tip by, say, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, who's worth billions. And they billions. spent a £1,000 on a bottle of wine. I guess it's all He's relative. He's a very good tipper, apparently. Yeah, apparently. Well, there you go. But is, is, it, is, is the generosity of the tipper about what they tip relative to what they've spent? Or, or is this right? Uh, Reese, since I've been in Rome, I've tipped all the restaurants and some of the waiters, some of the waiters individually. I mean, I, mm. I've gone back to that style of always now trying to find the waiter in question. But even that's not a guarantee because some places get you to turn out your pockets. You're not allowed to keep anything in your, in your pockets as a waiter. You, you know, you have to go back backstage, if you like, and tip it all onto the table. I mean, can is... Extra I'm, 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 I'm a bit torn on this one. Mm -hmm. I found the guy who did the opinion piece really fucking annoying. It's like, get over it. If you still watch Billy Bragg and feel resentment, you've got a real fucking problem. Mm, let go, let go. Let go, let go. Um, but... There is an, if you're spending 20,000, say, say Johnny Depp walks in and spends 20,000 pounds on a curry, which he did, didn't he, someone? Um, and doesn't leave a tip yeah, or leaves sure only a thousand pounds, which would be not 10%, would it? Should he, sh should he be barred? Should he be banned? Surely a thousand is better than a kick in the face, isn't it? Well, doesn't I mean, cost the waiter any more to serve them. I mean, it's up to the restaurant, isn't it, if they want to ban them? I mean, do I do don't think, think I would go to a restaurant if I knew it was banning or adding a secret extra charge because that in itself seems scurrilous what about if you've had haughty rude dismissive um, um service service which i we have had many <laughs> times well what France. about well, what about the old james um uh, what's his name the guy james what's his the guy what's had it? the chat show no they had the chat show in america that got done by um oh as balthazar Corden. James, what about james Corden? i mean there was a strong argument there that perhaps he just felt he wasn't you know i mean i don't know if that was the case there but what if he what if you have just received really moody <laughs> french service i mean the thing is we very rarely get we 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 always i'm gonna say something i now. mean i love wait i mean yeah. I, I, I was a waitress for years i always say i'd go oh, back to waitressing no problem if tv well tv but if it, you, we decide we don't want to do YouTube, I would actually be all right with waitressing because I loved it. Yeah. And so I have big, I have real respect for waiters, but I and for the struggles of restaurants because every look how expensive everything is produce. But what pisses me off is if a restaurant d serves you something that's really fucking horrible and charges you a fortune and a waiter is rude and mean and unkind and i don't i we always tip but it, i i resent it when it's somebody when we've had a bad experience i'm gonna be really Why honest on the on the occasions that we were eating in can you know as part of the kind of press corps Every single person who served us was a miserable bastard <laughs> i mean every single one of them was a miserable well, i mean it tip? stands out i mean okay what is a tip Right? A tip is an extra thank you because somebody has served you, yeah. okay? So that's what... Would I say thank you if somebody came up and, and spat in my face? No. What about if they spat in your food? <laughs> <laughs> what if they pushed your face in your cake? 
But Would I mean, you marry I them? am enormously like, you know, because if I see, I watch, because if you've worked in a restaurant, you know, don't you think, oh my God, they're so stressed. They've not got enough people out. Oh God, their manager looks like a right bastard. I literally go through the whole thing. Or they're a bit stressed. They're not horrible. They're just a bit stressed. Still give them a tip. Stanley makes a very good point, very simply put as well. Tipping is a very tricky subject. Should do it, but can't force it. You can't, you can't force it. It's, it's, it's like if, forcing some... Say thank you. Say thank you. What's, what's the point on. of it? Say thank you. Well, not if I don't feel like it. Exactly. It's like when you try and force someone to say sorry. Uh, yeah. Vanessa Wilde, uh, waiters in Paris were so rude when we visited in the <laughs> 80s. I've <laughs> never had a pleasant experience. This is the point. In virtually any French restaurant. Sorry to the French here. I've, I literally haven't. And maybe well, it's because they hate the Brits. But when fine. you go more out, I think more in the cities, yes. But when you go more more out, you have some lovely. Oh my god, where we are now! Oh my god, the people are so lovely, aren't they? It's amazing. Every single person that we've come across, whether travel, I mean, I've, whether, I've heard really nice. Everyone, I'd, has been I'd nice. always heard nice things about Clacton, but it's it's, it's really really we delivered. We're not in Clacton. I like Clacton. Um, yeah. Okay, so look, final, final couple of stories. James Bond, Erin Taylor Johnson. Who is an Erin Taylor Johnson fanny? I've got to ask this as a simple I question. forgot who he was. Okay. I said, who is she? And he went, it's a bloke. <laughs> Erin is Erin. Does anyone know who Erin Taylor Johnson is? Uh, good for Bond. Now, this isn't, I, to, I need to stress for film fans, this isn't confirmed, but um, he gave an interview. Never heard of him, sister. <laughs> He's married to Sam Taylor Wood Johnson, who is the director of Fifty Shades of Everything, uh, the artist. She's directing the new Amy Winehouse film. He was recently in Bullet Train. I think he played John Lennon, wasn't he, in Nowhere Boy? Um, he uh, and he's soon to be seen in a film called Craven the Hunter, which looks diabolical. Oh. Um, but what he did was... I see him in? I liked him because I've not seen him since. What, well, Kick Ass? Well, was he in Kick Ass? Oh, I've not seen him. I think he was in Kick Ass. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Maybe Taylor I've Johnson. Never he's, seen in, him. he's in the thumbnail. If you look him up, you'll, you'll see Maybe him. Maybe I've never actually seen him in a film and I just know of him. Now, I think the dilemma. Oh, oh God. What did I put? Is Aaron Taylor good for Bond? Yes, no. Why can't, why, can't, why can't we answer that? Bullet train, uh, can't vote, do not know. Oh, I see, sorry, Faith. I thought it was another one of my him. questions. <laughs> um, so here's the thing, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, getting the right bond is tricky because they need to be... Idris Elba's now out of the equation. Tom why? Hardy, he's kind of he's, he, well, he's kind of pulled himself out, but he's sick yeah. of being talked about about it. He's like, yeah. for God's sake, Jesus Christ. Now, the reason there's a little bit more... Um, he did have that small part in Tenet, which I thought was quite good, actually. Um, the thing, the thing that I've heard, and this was reported by The Sun earlier in the year, was that allegedly Aaron Taylor-Johnson uh, came off set shooting. Imagine being asked to do this. It'd be quite exciting as an actor. Uh, uh, being asked to do a, sh a test shoot of the gun turn for the title. He was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This oh. is the suggestion that he was... But I think also Henry Carville, who played Superman oh, some years he ago... He was asked to do a test A shoot, shoot test. And that's where he's been spotted from. Well, he was spotted earlier in the year. The he suggestion did a swivel is, with his Maybe he went, yeah, can you do that? You just sort of, he went, do 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 do. Do you think he had to hum the music? <laughs> yeah, and do you think, do you think they put, they said, remember, the iris of the thing is about that big of the, the gun sight. I mean, yeah, maybe they got him to stand really far away and shot it through a toilet roll. Mm. You maybe he did it in his bedroom. Do 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 do. Do you think he did a shake and not stirred? The weird thing about whoever the actor is that they, they choose for this is they have to kind of be nondescript. Oh, my God, I've just realised I don't know who you'd like to be Bond. I've never asked you. Who I would like to be Bond? Who would you like, guys? I mean, I... Who, I, yeah, who would I, you like? I, I, mean, I think don't... this is probably James one of those Norton, stories Elsa put about... God, I look, look at me. Look Elsa, so Pop says, oh, Elsa Pop says uh, James Norton. Uh, Adina would be very happy. James Norton. Yeah, Reese Roberts. The racial issue with Idris ultimately put him off. He got a lot of shit. Oh, did he? A, he did talk about did that. He? he got a lot of shit. Oh, so it's like he said, it's such a shame people. for that to be reduced back to that. Uh, um, James Norton. But do you James, think... he's a fantastic he, actor. Can he cold he's comedy? devastatingly charismatic. He's good looking. He's got a strong jaw. I tell you who I think would be good for it because there has to be camp. And there has he to be. Do I don't know if James Bond can. Of course he I don't can. know if he can. He's such a good actor. Mark. I tell you, who I think would be good Tom Hiddleston. I do. No, I, please I, don't say Tom. I don't, I'm not a huge no, fan, but I think no, he could. No, 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 no. Oh, there is God. something missing. Buff, not buff enough. No, it's not even that. There's just he hasn't got it. What do you think? And you need to have the indif. You need to have the X factor. 
He doesn't have the X factor. Tom Hiddleston is lovely, he's a good actor. He's Tom good Hardy? Kid, a lot of people want Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is now past it. He's too, bar he's he's too chunky too, in a muscly way. He's too. He's a bit too old. I know what you mean. He needs to... Okay, here's the thing about... Would have been the thing before. about Bond. Bond needs... You've, you need to be able to believe that Bond can sashay into a classy environment. And I think Tom Hardy can't quite pull that off. He's, he's a bit too damn rough. damn fine actor. Don't, no, no, don't no. Call, don't, don't, no, 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 don't. no. What I'm saying is in terms of everything that comes... What makes him good so actor. good is that he's... That's why he's great at Venom. He's, he's got a rough and ready sort of like... Appeal about him, even I can see that. But I think he would do in a suit walking in to get a daiquiri from some. I can't a see him. Daiquiri. But, well, or is it shaken not stirred? What does he have? Martini. A martini. Daiquiri. A pina colada, please. Leap it if they're looking for camp. Then I'm happy to put my name forward. I think it'd be a great. I, I think they. Aaron Taylor Johnson. I'm not too sure. What I thought, do you think, Lee? Lee, who would you have as your Bond? Who would you? Uh, what have we got here? Jamie, Jamie Dornan. Is that how you pronounce it? Dornan, the guy from um, mm. Belfast, the husband. Oh. He looks, he, he could look the part. Jamie, Jamie oh, I'm Dornan. thinking of the one that was in, um, I always get my Jamie's James mixed up. James Norton. Daniel Radcliffe's, isn't it? Hang on. Hang on. The Jamie. guy from Belfast. Why can't the I husband. picture his face? You know, the lovely looking husband. Oh, he was good. Yeah, he's lovely. He was good. James he, Norton. He was the guy, he was actually the bloke in Fifty Shades of Grey, wasn't he? he was oh, no, I don't want him. Oh. I thought that's who he was. Oh, right. Okay. No, I have got my Jamie's right. Right. No. Okay. He's got a weakness about him, like Tom Hiddleston. See, Mo Power, Hugh Jackman has a similar similar physicality to Tom Hardy. He's not what I see, I see spelt in a Tom sinewy. Ford suit. He's too shriveled. Need a twinkle in their eyes. Yeah. You see, a lot of people were asking for Regé Jean Page. No, but, no, no. He ha well. He was fucking hysterical in Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, actually, check him out Regé in that. could do it because Regé was good in now. In I'm going to say this, and I don't mean it as an insult. Go on He's then. got Roger Moore woodenness. And I think he could take the piss out of his own eyebrow. Yes. You go, Bond, James Bond. But if we're looking for, for like a new and like depth, real depth to add to James Norton. I'm telling you right now, check out Dungeons and Dragons for one thing alone. Regé Jean Page, ah. he, he, he played it straight and he took advantage, and this is what made me think he could be a good, good one. He took advantage, because a lot of people described him as one note from Bridgerton. He could yes, that's what thing. I was worried about. It wasn't enough kind of light and shades mm. to his performance. But he took that, camped it up, and played it so straight, oh, it was okay. funny. So I must I think he judge too soon. Yeah. Um, Henry Cavill? Henry Cavill, Cavill, Cavill yeah, the ex-Superman. Former Superman. Well, the most recent Superman. He's also in The Witcher. You've got a little crush on him, Lee. He's all right. Not too sure. Do you think that we could ever have a gay James Bond? I think that would be sensational. They would go. But can you imagine though? People would go. Okay, let's right. Let's think of all that. Or let's think of a gay James Bond. Who could that be? I can only think of Lee now. <laughs> it's got a good, it. A it's gonna have to be you, Lee. It's good Lee. <laughs> Barbara Broccoli sitting there having the same thoughts. Can only think of one person. Lee. Lee, you've got to post it on your stories. You, oh, God, well, him in his pink jacket, that velvet jacket. And when he's standing there with a martini, you with a cocktail, mate. With a martini. That's your odyssey. That's your odyssey. Mm. Anyway, and I'd Graham you, Norton, and if, this is my If friend. I cast you as Bond, Lee, I would have you go back. To, I love his short peroxide hair. I did love that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was yeah. a moment. It was only a moment, not a movement, that, wasn't it, Lee? A movement? What, as in a bowel movement? No, a movement. Oh, I see. That he became like... Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, Tom, I don't know. OK. All right. I think someone needs to be able to do comedy. John he... Waite from Strictly, somebody said, why is he's gone so, like, muscly? No, too muscly for me. He's a lovely guy, John yeah. Waite, uh, honestly. And do you know he's been sober now for a year? Has he? Good him man. Him and his sister did it together. Really? Yeah, I keep saying to you, you must check him that out. That is so good. No, it is so good. Is I'm so, so good. chuffed for him. Jason Momoa, Teresa Hutchinson. He's got the same bulk issue, I... Timothy Chalamet. You can't have Timothy Chalamet. You blow him over in a one-puff. Do you know what would be quite counterintuitive? If There'd they be a sharp wind like... on the mountain and he'd get blown off it. Sharp, that's true. <laughs> and quite counterintuitive would be if they'd cast Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio. No. Someone big. No. Anyway, there's talk, there is mutterings, Reese. you probably know this, Christopher Nolan has very Alan clearly... Carr says Christopher Linda. Nolan has clearly thrown his cap into the, <clears throat> into the ring as a potential director. He said he would love to direct one if he was given total freedom. If I was the Bond lot, I would do that off the back of Oppenheimer. Anyway, guys. Why? 
You weren't that impressed. No, it wasn't, no, but he is a great filmmaker, and there are moments in it that mm. are brilliant, but it was my least favourite Christopher Nolan. But in other films, I mean, Tenet, for example, th thread a bit of Tenet into James Liam Bond. Liam Hemsworth. Fantastic. Lots of people love Liam, Liam Hemsworth. He's Hemsworth. He's Isn't, hasn't he left the business? No, that's Chris. That's his brother. His brother. Well, he hasn't left the business, but he has stepped back a bit because he wants to... He has a, well, that. yeah, I don't think he knows he's got Alzheimer's, but his, 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 he has. He did that it's test where he has such a genes. high potential to get it. Yeah, absolutely. that he's left the world of showbiz. Well, and he's, he's stepping back a bit. Stepping back, isn't he, to mm. spend all his time with his family? And I absolutely. just think, oh God, yeah. Okay. So, guys, at some point. So let's just run through what's happening later from so members of Coffee Moaning. We, we want more people to follow us on Coffee Moaning on Instagram. A, because there's going to be a really good prize coming up there. Don't want people to miss out on it. And B, just because we won. <laughs> it's our new, it's our new um, account. And can um, Kylie's daughter Eva <clears throat> get a happy birthday? She was 18 yesterday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, birthday dear Eva. Eva. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Um, so on the members area, <coughs> a... Surprise Members Live will be happening later today at some point, and there will be a 10 to 15 minute notice period where a notice will go up on the community tab uh, on the channel and it will notify you if you're a member when we're going to go live. And will we be revealing where we are? In that live, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And after that, some point after that, later in the day, we're going to be doing a surprise live on... from a coffee shop. I will that still so. be a secret where we are? I hope so. Well, it won't be, will it? Because it? it won't be, it won't have been by then. Oh my God, this is just, it's like, <laughs> why? Basically. There'll be a live on Coffee Moaning later after that. At some point. Yeah, yeah. So so make the sure you're, you're following uh, Coffee Moaning. Please share Coffee Moaning with all your friends and family. As I say, there is a really nice surprise coming Coffee Moaning. Yeah. <clears throat> over the next week or so. And Julie says it would be my late granddad's birthday today. Oh, happy Aww. birthday. It's, it's yeah. That we well, we won't say the word we discovered because then I nearly gave away exactly where we were. Yeah. All right, guys, have a lovely day, and um, we'll see you later in the members area or on Coffee Moaning Instagram. Bye.